So it's a shift in geography. I think we have slides that we can share at some point. My name is Cristina Stefanelli. I will share the presentation uh, with uh, Javiera and uh, Daniel. I'm based in Italy, in the middle of the apocalypse. Um, and I work at UNIMED, uh, which is Mediterranean Universities Union, which is a network of universities focused on the Euro-Mediterranean cooperation. Uh, we will talk about Open Med, um, which stands for Opening Up Education in South Mediterranean Countries, uh, which is an initiative funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union, aimed at raising awareness uh, on the adoption of open educational resources and open educational practices in the South, Mediter in, in the South Mediterranean countries, uh, with a specific focus on higher education in Egypt, Jordan, uh, Morocco, and Palestine. Uh, in, in those countries, uh, the demand of higher education often exceeds capacity of the higher education system, and the use and integration of open educational resources and open practices are possible ways to expand access to learning opportunities thus promoting equity, inclusion, and democratization of higher education. We have been working with a pretty large consortium of universities um, in the UK, in Spain, and in the South Mediterranean countries. Um, there is a picture where we are all together in Coventry University during one of our uh, coordination meetings. Uh, what we have done uh, during the, this project is to um, revise and analyze uh, open education uh, initiatives worldwide, which could have been easily um, transferred to those um, countries. We have been widening participation in open education through consultations with national uh, stakeholders. We have also done a, um, a, a setup of physical centers in the eight partner universities, and we have designed and developed an OER training course to build capacities for um, educators in um, using, adopting uh, open educational resources. Um, the project is finished, well, the funding is finished. Um, one year and a half ago. What we have done during this period is to consolidate the community, of the, the large community of educators in those countries, and to um, analyze the impact of this capacity building intervention one year later to see what they have done with the competencies, with the resources, with the centers, etc. I leave the floor to Daniel, who will speak a little bit about the course, and Javiera will go through the impact assessment. Thank you, Christina. Uh, yes, so as Christina said, the course was just one component within a wider set of uh, outputs, but it was a very important one. And it was one developed collaboratively throughout different steps in the project. So and I think it's quite important to stress uh, that the, all the partners were involved, uh, even though each of the, you can see on the slides that there were five modules within the course, and they were led by different institutions that all institutions were involved in the development uh, of the course. Um, we had even a facilitator's uh, workshop uh, in Madrid, I think back in, in May 2017, where we started to work together, uh, brainstorming on the content, but also the methodology uh, for delivering the, the content, which uh, each university had some level of uh, kind of autonomy to decide how they wanted to arrange some uh, learning circles. We were using a virtual learning environment for that, but the content is now available. And if you go to the website, you are able to to not just have access to the content, but also do some uh, activities. You can see on the slides um, now the, the kind of um, split of participants. 
Um, and actually, the gender imbalance was something quite interesting that we discussed uh, at different points in the project and was a major concern by our partners in the, in the South Mediterranean countries as well. So some of them made a, a, took the project as an opportunity to actually uh, break down some gender barriers. Um, and also, it, as you can see, it's interesting the, the kind of uh, age uh, because um, we had an interesting uh, kind of a uh, balance of uh, young kind of early career uh, lecturers, but also uh, senior people. So we managed to involve senior people who were able to also uh, impact the, the decision making and policy making at an institutional level. Um, so. I said that we started with this uh, facilitators workshop in Madrid and then uh, we kept working together uh, remotely and through a number of uh, also face-to-face -face meetings back in the day when we had uh, the possibility to participate in face-to-face -face meetings. Um, and we also opened a, a version uh, that could be revised. Um, we took uh, contributions and feedback from the wider community. So not just the people involved directly in the projects, at some point, uh, we shared with the community, uh, the OER community, the the draft of the course, and that was very useful as a way of uh, getting some inputs and revising the content. Um, and then, of course, we had also a meeting um, in Torino, and that's where we uh, covered some part of the content. Um, and then we started, so we, we knew that we wanted to complement the online stages with something which was face to face. And that was a way of a kind of kicking off that part of the project. And that was quite important to, to meet all together in uh, Torino. We had wonderful um, guest speakers. And then after that, the different partners started to facilitate their own learning circles in their own institutions and also inviting in some cases other institutions from the respective uh, countries. Um, and then also, um, apart from that, we ran a series of webinars, which uh, we had the chance to involve uh, fantastic colleagues. Uh, some of them have been with us uh, in this uh, conference, like Lorna Campbell or Catherine Cronin, they as well. So in total, there were five webinars open to the large community, not just uh, the partners involved in the project. Um, so I don't know if I have missed anything, Cristina and Javiera, which uh, was relevant about the course, but um, I think I've pretty much covered uh, the basics. Yeah, I shared yeah, the you links to the reusable versions of the course and all the work that you did and make it really open. <laughs> yeah, so uh, as, I, as I said, it, it was a, delivered through a VLE, but uh, we knew that we wanted to make this truly open. So now there is a legacy uh, package, and also I will share a link to a kind of legacy plan, uh, because we made an effort to make sure that everything was available beyond the life uh, of the, well, the funded life of the project. Yeah, thank you, Dani. Uh, yeah, so of course, if you have questions, we can, we will we'll try to go as fast as I can. So we'll uh, give you time to, to discuss and um, uh, to, to talk about more of, of the course and the legacy plan. What we did with, with Christine and, and with Dani this, this year was actually was last year an, an impact assessment. Um, when we first started with the course, with the Open Med course, uh, we asked um, the participants, both the facilitators and the students, how uh, do they engage with open education? What, what was the level of uh, knowledge or understanding of open educational practices? And also, uh, what was the professional uh, expectations that they had with the course? But also, the, as, as the project has many components, once we're to develop the uh, policy level and also the institutional level uh, in regards to open, open education around um, country members and also the institutions. So um, when when we looked, and this is all to, to Christina, uh, when, when we looked and how to we could have an impact at, at policy level, uh, we contacted uh, five national uh, strategy forums where 
uh, participants from, from the partner universities, but also from all the universities in the country, were invited to discuss policy and strategic uh, plans for the adoption uh, of open education, open educational practices in general. And we set up a regional agenda for uh, the South Mediterranean universities, which was actually discussed pub almost publicly. So I don't know if, if, if we have the, the link to it, uh, but what we did was to create an agenda and to have a, a set of targets and goals and to make uh, to leave it um, available for everyone to discuss so we can have the entire open education community having their say. And finally, we have the recommendations to institutional leaders and policymakers in the region. Uh, one of the things that the document aims is to um, engage with senior management to uh, foster uh, the development of open education policies. And for example, one of the first outcomes is the Moroccan uh, education De open education declaration, which is actually based to in the um, uh, Scottish declaration. So one of, one of the things that is quite interesting is that these recommendations can be tailored and uh, that's something that we are now working very closely with, with Christina, is to develop further develop these recommendations for uh, the, the development of open education policies. Um, so here's kind of the overview of what we read for uh, the, 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 the policy forums. We're actually really, really good fun because people met and developed like national and institutional strategies through the strategy forum. So, but that was all together with the agenda that we already have um, that was kind of shared by, by every member. So the, the agenda has uh, five, five levels. It's, uh, let's say uh, open content, open licensing, pedagogy and practices, technology, governance and business models and also collaboration models between institutions because of course even though we had uh, partner institutions the idea is that these partner institutions became the reference center for the rest of the country so it's not just that we work with one institution for that institution is that institution ha is actually and this is what's happening um, our partner institutions are now the reference centers in their own countries on, on, on open education so uh, we have the roadmaps for open education and also the, uh, this is something maybe Christina might like to, to briefly mention what we did with them, but it's not just the paperwork at policy and impact level, and it's actually some physical work that is quite interesting because open med funding, the innovation centers for open education at South and Mediterranean Party universities. So maybe Christina, do um, you want to show what they, what they are? Um, yes, we have some pictures. Uh, this was just to mention that we have supported uh, those universities also to establish centers, physical centers within the university uh, with simple tools like computers or some of them would, um, well, uh, keep the centers with uh, green screens or things like that. Uh, but Having a physical center, a physical space within the universities is, is useful both at the institutional level to have open education initiative recognized within, um, within the university physically and also as a space for uh, professors to meet and share and um, get inspired. Uh, there is one uh, center that I think that we have a slide about that. In, uh, uh, in Morocco, at Marrakech, um, where they have equipped uh, like trolley, like mobile studios, because the center uh, was really small with like three, four persons working there, and they were not able to support all the professors. So what they have done is to buy um, trolleys with the mobile studios. This is a picture. So professors can just take those mobile studios and uh, record lessons or do what they need to do to produce content. Just say uh, five minutes left. Thanks. So when 
you sort of go back once. So when we ask, uh, after one year that we completed the course, we asked the participants and the facilitators, so the learners and the facilitators, uh, about the impact that the Open Med course had to, to them, uh, we could see quite, quite interesting uh, outcomes. So, for example, maybe it's quite, quite small, but we ask about the confidence, how confident the participants felt uh, after, uh, the, before and after the course. So you can see that before the, the, the Open Med course, most of, of, of the participants participants felt like uh, mildly confident, or slightly confident, but the confidence uh, feeling quite increased quite, 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 quite a lot. Uh, after the course, so we asked people how confident they felt about like open education approach, uh, pedagogy and, and approaches, open licensing, creation of MOOCs, and production of uh, use of OER in open educational practices. Um, so uh, we asked them also how they, what was the impact of 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 the skills that they acquired through Open Med, and it's quite interesting to say that like most of them created. Uh, content for for the courses, but also a small group were creating policies for for their universities, or were leading open education pro uh, um, projects at the universities, or belonged to committees, or or um, they were design uh, open education policies at, 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 at workplaces. So, uh, but also we were asking uh, how was the impact of open med in their professional careers. And we were actually quite amazed to see, even though it's a small percentage, we have two, two, two participants that were giving a teaching award uh, because of the, the practice of clearly improved. Students have noticed that. Um, lots of, 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 of our uh, participants were uh, training all the colleagues in, in open education. Um, they, were, they were the reference people for open education in, in their own institutions. Their bosses, their colleagues, the students were asking them about about open education and um, some of them were really happy to be invited to talk about open education by all the universities some others were invited to talk about open education at international events so actually for people that um, were just starting with open education most of them most of the participants have no relationship with it before the open med project the impact is quite, quite quite important and it's quite huge and actually it's it's really great for us and the community is still uh keeps, keeps going on we have a mailing list where we all talk to each other and they invite us to events uh we send them what we're doing uh they tell us about their publications or they tell us about their course so i don't know chris if you just want to close down talking about the community Yes, uh, this is us with the recommendations. <laughs> um, the community is still there. Of course, um, we need to um, keep the community running, in a sense. Uh, this is just this last initiative uh, that we have done uh, during COVID-19. Um, we have done this plot, which is this mini site. I have to thank Dani and, and all the uh, plot people around for empowering me to do all those things <laughs> online. But we have done this um, mini website to collect stories of online resilience during this uh, period of emergency. Uh, this is the link to this uh, mini website which is open to everyone. So if you would like to share what you are doing to cope with the emergency, to inspire our Mediterranean community, you are much welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us and thanks Marcin and the team for hosting this beautiful event. So thank you very much to all. <laughs>